I will start enumerating everything, and I am enumerating those co comorbidities which can actually be tackled by our own actions. Okay. Yes. For example, yes. you know, a family history you can't do anything about it, but uh, uh, it's a family history is like a loaded gun. But the trigger is with us. This is the you know, if the gun is loaded, but if we have never triggered, it's never going to fire. So genetics is like loaded gun. But the actual trigger is with us, which is the environment. So these are the comorbidities which we can actually uh, take care. So hypertension and diabetes, you have already uh, uh, told. I want to uh, take you to little bit early stages of diabetes and high blood pressure, which is often neglected. And this is called as pre-diabetes and pre-hypertension. So pre-diabetes means your sugars are slightly more than normal, but they are not in the diabetic range. So you're not called diabetic. But pre-diabetic itself is a risk factor for so many macrovascular complications, including the blockages in the heart. So it has to be tackled, it has to be taken care of, and it cannot be neglected that it is just the beginning. Uh, people take it lightly because they think it is, I'm still not diabetic. So it's just the uh, uh, thought that, you know, if it is this value, then I'm diabetic, I need to take action if it is not this value. So pre-diabetes is also very important. Similarly, there is a concept of elevated BP, where we are saying, like for example, the BP less than 120-80 is considered as normal. Now with the 120-30, like me, that means it is slightly more than normal. It is called as elevated BP. Although there is no recommendation to take medicines in this group, but it should put you in on alert that you need to take action because now you are in an elevated BP group where uh, if you don't take action now, you are definitely going to need medications in future. Then high cholesterol values. These are something which uh, can be tackle very well through diet exercise and some we need medications uh, often uh, then uh, we have obesity which is uh, something which is also neglected there is something called as hidden obesity in the indian context also because the indian obese hidden obesity is thin obese person so what is this thin obese person a person whose weight looks normal but he has a belly which is coming out which is called as abdominal paunch which is coming out now this is a visceral fat and this comorbidity is neglected quite often. Somebody whose uh, uh, hip waist ratio is not matching, that means the, uh, the uh, waist is significantly uh, uh, more and uh, the, there is abdominal fat which is there, is a significant comorbidity. So there can be obvious uh, obesity where the BMI is very high and then there is also a hidden obesity which is quite often missed by uh, people. Then there is something which is also very often neglected and I wish to tell you uh, that people should understand is something called as obstructive sleep apnea syndrome. Now people who are sleeping in the night but they are a loud snorer or even they are not getting a good quality of sleep because of the snoring. So their body is under tremendous stress because they are not getting adequate oxygenation and this reflects in increasing the chances of uh, insulin resistance causing diabetes, causing high blood pressure and also impact uh, renal outcomes that means the kidney problems can also increase and uh, i can tell you a lot of times when there is nothing found their bp is on the higher side we don't know why it is happening you ask them you ask them the history of snoring and they will say yeah we snore a lot i snore a lot and then uh, you ask that whether they feel sleepy during the day lazy during the day less energetic during the day and they will respond yes and this is one comorbidity which needs to be tackled so obesity hidden obesity Sleep apnea, these are something which are not usually asked by sometimes or not observed and people think it is a benign. Sometimes they know that they are snoring, but they think it is benign. So it needs evaluation. Similarly, renal dysfunction. There are a lot of cardiorenal syndrome. So heart and kidneys are strongly related. Those people who have kidney disease, they have higher chances of developing uh, you know, cardiovascular diseases like blockages and all those things. So even uh, people, who, the early CKD could be just leaking of protein in the uh, urine which cannot and the the creatinine values will be normal so those people who are hypertension and diabetic they should also check uh, whether they are secreting albumin microalbumin into their urine and if it is high that means they have already begun started to develop kidney disease and kidney disease which is chronic kidney disease can lead to again cardiovascular disease so these are something which uh, uh, are things which needs to be uh, seen now we had a death of a celebrity, young 40 years celebrity. I don't know whether you are aware, Siddharth Shukla. He had shocked to see. Was, yes. Yeah, it was a very shocking incident that's such a healthy. So I have seen a lot of, and in my own case studies, I have realized that lack of sleep 
and stress which again cannot be measured the stress cannot be measured also impacts and should be considered mental stress should also be considered as a comorbidity for heart ailment so these are uh, certain things which i want to make aware through our talk that you know they cannot be neglected and over a period of time they can create a situation which can affect our health negatively